Kia ora koutou. I'm Jude Ball from the Public Health Association, and this is our vision. Haora mō te katoa, oranga mō te au. Health for all people and well-being for the world. And my talk will echo some of the themes you've already heard from Theresa Wall. Um, and the main point I want to get across is that, yes, improving our health services is vital, but if we want transformational change in terms of health and health equity in New Zealand, we need to think and act beyond the health sector. Because the building blocks of health are not in hospitals, the building blocks of health are in the places we live, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our neighbourhoods. So if everyone is to enjoy good health, everyone needs access to the basics for health. Basics like a warm, dry, affordable house. Basics like access to good food. Opportunities for everyday exercise. Clean air, clean water, a stable climate. And to thrive, we also need the um, a warm social environment. We need friends and family to love and to love us back. And broad, more broadly than that, we need to feel valued in our society and to live a life that's free from discrimination and violence. So unfortunately, because of the deliberate policies of successive governments and the influence of big business, not everyone in New Zealand has access to these basics for health. And as a result, our Māori communities, Pacifica, low-income families, and other structurally disadvantaged groups experience poorer health, and they die younger than privileged New Zealanders. So in New Zealand and around the world, poverty is a major threat to health, along with institutional racism. And that's because if you're poor, access to a, cl a clean, dry, warm house is kind of out of reach. And if you're working three do do jobs to try and pay the rent, or if you're living in a car, the chances of being able to cook healthy, home-cooked meals for your family are pretty low, right? And when you add institutional racism to that picture, we add trauma and further barriers to achieving those basics that we need for health, as we've already heard from our first speakers today. We're facing a climate crisis, and environmental degrega degradation is a further challenge to health. And examples are, just this last week, we've had flooding up in Northland. Once again, um, people are displaced from their homes, and this is exacerbating the problems with damp and cold, mouldy housing. Um, these flooding issues are going to only increase as time goes by. Thinking back a few years, the Hastings um, Campylobacter outbreak, where four people were killed and 5,000 people got sick with Campylobacter, the contributing factors were intensive farming and flash flooding that resulted in animal feces in the water supply. Another issue related to climate change is that 20 years ago, New Zealand was too cold to be able to support um, the life of exotic mosquitoes that carry Zika virus and um, dengue fever. That's no longer the case. So like COVID-19, those exotic mosquitoes are being kept out at our borders by biosecurity, where they're coming in from ships from Asia and the Pacific. Um, but we now have a country that's warm enough for those mosquitoes to thrive here. So it's probably only a matter of time um, before we're dealing with Zika and dengue here in New Zealand too. And finally, I want to highlight the fact that corporate vested interests are a real threat to progressive change in the health sector and, and beyond. So here I'm thinking about the tobacco companies that are continuing to push a product that they know is deadly, that kills 5,000 New Zealanders a year. 
I'm th thinking about the alcohol industry and big food who continue to lobby government um, to oppose any regulations on their advertising or sales of their product, overconsumption of which is harming our communities. I'm thinking about the corporate interests that block action on climate change. I'm thinking about the multinationals that avoid tax and rob our governments of the tax income they need to supply health and other services. So these are some of the threats to health. Um, you might not think of these as traditionally health issues, but they are, and we need to deal with them as such. So we're here today to talk about solutions. So what are some of the solutions? Well, I think number one, we need to raise low incomes so that everybody can get what they need for health. Um, there are others here much more qualified to talk about the details of how to make that happen. But what I can say is that there's plenty of money in New Zealand. The problem is that it's not distributed fairly, and that needs to change. Secondly, we need to eliminate racism and other forms of disc discrimination and systemic violence. Again, there are others that are much more qualified to talk about specifics here, and we've already heard from some very powerful speakers. But just thinking about the health sector, I'd like to echo Theresa Wall's call to really um, support the Waitangi Tribunal um, process that's going on at the moment. There's an inquiry into Māori health outcomes. One report has been released. We're expecting more, and we need to implement those recommendations because what we've been doing, as Theresa said, is not working. Secondly, the um, Simpson report recommended a fairly toothless kind of Māori health authority against the advice of its Māori advisers. So all of us as allies need to get behind Māori calls for, for genuine power sharing in the health sector and a Māori health authority that actually has some authority. Finally, we need to address climate change. And the good news here is that many of the things that we need to do to reduce carbon emissions are also really good for human health. And that's really important from an advocacy point of view because the health co-benefits are felt immediately and locally. So they should be easier to sell than actions that address um, emissions alone. So let me give you a couple of examples. So in the transport sector, thanks to the uh, urban planning of the 40s and 50s, we have these sprawling cities um, and a, the number of cars per people in New Zealand is, I think, higher than anywhere in the world. And that's terrible for the climate. It's also terrible for our health. The New Zealand Health Survey shows that barely half of New Zealanders get the bare minimum of physical activity that they need to maintain health. Barely half. We also have a high road crash toll of deaths and injuries. And also the, the exhaust from vehicles creates air pollution that affects heart disease and asthma and other chronic conditions. And in fact, the number of deaths attributable to um, the exhaust from vehicle fumes is actually quite similar to our road toll. It's been called the hidden road toll. And I don't think many people realise that. Um, so what, what do we need to do? Well, we need to, we need to make the healthy choice the easy choice. So we can do that by making cheaper and more affordable public transport. We can do that by investing in safe, safe cycling and walking infrastructure to make active transport um, safe and enjoyable. And we need to plan our cities for people rather than cars. And there's a, there is, um, we know that New Zealanders are bike curious. About 50% of people have said that they are willing to give biking a go. Um, so we need to build the infrastructure to allow that to happen. The second example I'd like to give is home insulation. So uninsulated homes, are, they're not energy efficient. They're bad for the environment, but they're also bad for health. So they contribute to the 40,000 children 
who are hospitalised every year with asthma, bronchiolitis and other conditions related to cold, damp houses. And those kids get, get discharged back to that substandard housing and the cycle continues. So we need to warm up our houses. There have been great steps taken so far, but we need to go harder and faster. So what it's all about is building a fairer society, a more sustainable society, and one in which everyone gets what they need for health. Kia ora. Kia ora. Oh, chocolate. Yeah.